Live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live, theCUBE in New York City for Big Data NYC. This is our fifth year doing our own event, not with O'Reilly or Cloudera at Strata Data, which was Hadoop World, Strata Conference, Strata Hadoop, now called Strata Data, probably called Strata AI next year. We're theCUBE every year bringing all the great data and uh, what's going on, entrepreneurs, VCs, uh, thought leaders, we, we interviewed them and bring that to you. I'm John Furrier with our next guest, Greg Sands, who's the managing director and founder of Castanova Ventures in Palo Alto. Started out as an entrepreneur himself, the single shingle out there. Now he's a big VC firm on third fund. On the third fund. Third fund, how yes. much in that fund? A uh, $175 million fund. So now you're a big firm now, congratulations, and really great to see your uh, success. Thanks very much, I mean, we're still very much a early stage boutique focused yeah. on companies that change the way the world does business, but it is the case that we have uh, a bigger team and, yeah. a, and a bigger fund to go do the same thing. Well, you've been great to work with. I've been following, we've known each other for a while, watch you left Sutter Hill and start Costa Noah. But what's interesting is, is that, and I kind of joke and kid you, it's, you know, the VC inside joke about being a big firm, because I know you want to be small and like to be small help entrepreneurs, that's your thing. But it's really not a big firm, it's a few partners, but a lot of people helping companies. That's your ethos, that's what you're all about with your firm. Take a minute to just share with the folks the kinds of things you do and how you get involved in companies. Your hands on, you roll up your sleeves, you get out of the way at the right time, you help when you can, share your ethos. Yeah, absolutely. So the way we think of it is combining the craft of old school venture capital with a modern operating team. And so since most founders these days are product oriented, our job is to think like product people, not think like investors. So we think like product people, we do product level analysis, we do customer discovery, we do, mm -hmm. we go right along on sales calls when we're making investment decisions. And then, you know, we do the things that uh, great venture capitalists have, have done for years. And so, for example, at Alation, who I know has been on the, yeah. on the, uh, on the show today, we were able to incubate them in our office for a year. I had many conversations with Satyan after he'd sold the first two or three customers. Okay, who's the next person we hire? Who isn't a founder? Who's going to go out and sell? What does that person look like? Do you go straight to a VP, VP or do you hire an individual contributor? Do you hire someone for domain or do you hire someone for, for talent? And that's the thing that we love doing. Now we've actually built out an operating team, so a marketing partner, Martina Lauchenko, and Jim Wilson as a sales partner, to really help turn that into a program so that they can, we can take these founders who find product market fit and say, how do we help you build the right sales process and marketing process, sales team and marketing yeah. team for your company, your customer, your product? Well, it's interesting you mentioned old school venture capital. I'll get into some of the dynamics that are going on in Silicon Valley, but it's important to, to bring that forward because now with cloud, you can get to critical mass on the flywheel on economics. You can see the visibility faster now. Absolutely. So the game of the old school venture capitalists is all the same. How do you get to cruising altitude? Whatever metaphor you want to use, the key was getting there. And sometimes it took a couple rounds, but now you can get these companies with you know five million, maybe $10 million funding. Yeah. They could have unit economics visibility, scales in sight, then the scale game comes in. So that seems to be the the secret trick right now in venture is don't overspend, keep the valuation in a range that allows you to look for multiple exits potentially or growth. Talk about that dynamic because this is like, I call it the hourglass. You get through the hourglass, you know, everyone's down here, but you can sneak through and get the visibility on the economics, then you grow quickly. Absolutely, and I mean, it's exactly right. And I, I haven't heard the hourglass metaphor before, but I like it. You want to basically get through the narrows of product market fit and the beginnings of uh, scalable sales and marketing. You don't need to know all the answers, but you can do that in a capital efficient way, mm -hmm. building really solid foundations for future explosive growth. Yeah. Look, everybody loves fast growth and big markets and being grow into yeah. them, but the number of people who basically don't build those foundations and say, go big or go home, and they take a ton of money, and they go spend all the money yeah. doing things that just fundamentally don't work, and they blow themselves up. Well, this is the hourglass problem. You have, once you get through that unit economics, then you have true scale and value will increase. That's right. Everybody wins there. So it's about getting through that, and you can get through it faster with good mentoring, but here's the challenge that entrepreneurs fall into the trap. I call it the 
the I think I made it trap. And what happens is they think they're on the other side of the yes. hourglass, yes. but they still haven't even gone through the straight and narrow yet, and they don't know it. And what they do is they overfund and implode. That seems to be a major trap I see a lot of entrepreneurs fall into. Well, I got a 50 million pre on my B round or some monster valuation, and they get way too much cash and they're behaving as if they're scaling and they haven't even nailed it yet. Well, I, I think that's right. So there are certainly, there are stages of product market fit. And so I think sometimes people mm. hit that first stage and they say, oh, I've got it. And they try to explode out of the gates. And, mm -hmm. and we, uh, in fact, I, I know one good example of somebody said, hey, by the way, we're doing great in field, in field sales and our investors want us to go really fast. So we're going to go inside. And we, my job was to hire 50 inside people without ever having tried it. And so we always preach crawl, walk, run, right? Hire yeah. a couple, see how it works, right? In a new channel yeah. or a new category or an adjacent space. And I think that it's helpful to have an investor who has seen the whole picture to say, yeah, I know it looks like light at the end of the tunnel, but see how it's a relatively small dot. <laughs> you still got to go a little farther. And then the other thing I say is, look, don't build your company to feed your venture capitalist's ego, right? Yeah. I mean, people yeah. do these big rounds at big valuations and the big dog investors say, go, go, go. But <laughs> you're the CEO. Your job is to you analyze the data the the day. <laughs> and say, how, you know, given what we know, how fast should we go? Yeah. Which investments should we make? And you've got to own that. And I think sometimes our job is just to be you know, the pulling guard and clear space for the CEO to make good decisions. So, um, yeah, no, I'm a big fan. So my bias is pretty much out there. I love what you guys are doing. Tim Connors at Pivot North is doing the same thing, really adding value, getting down and dirty. But the question that entrepreneurs always ask me and talk privately, not about you, but in general, I don't want the VC to get in the way. I want them, I don't want them to preach to me. I don't want too many uh, know-it-alls on my board. I want added value, but again, I don't want the preaching. I don't want them to get in the way because that's a fear. I'm not saying that's thing about VCs in general, but that's kind of the mentality of an entrepreneur. I want someone who's going to help me, be in the boat with me, but not be in my way. How do you address that concern uh, to the founders who think, uh, not think like that, but might have, might have well, a fear? By, by the way, I think it's a legitimate fear, and I think it actually is uncorrelated with added value, right? I, the, uh, I think the idea uh, that the board has certain responsibilities and management has certain yeah. responsibilities is incredibly important. And I think, I, you know, I can speak for myself in saying I'm, quite conscious of not crossing that line. I think yeah. you talk, uh, you, know, you gotta do a, thing, you gotta build a return. I mean, that's no, the that's other right. thing. No, but, I, but, but ultimately I'd say to an entrepreneur, I'd just say, hey look, call references. And by the way, here are 30 names and phone numbers and call any yeah. one of them. Because I think the people who are, uh, so a venture capital know-it-all in the boardroom telling CEOs what to do destroys value. Is sand in the gears and yeah, it's bad absolutely. for the company. Good. And I so agree, some 100%. of my, when I talk about being a pulling guard for the CEO, that's what I'm talking about which is blocking people who are destructive. And rolling a block for a touchdown, kind of use the metaphor, yeah. adding value. That's the key, and that's why I wanted to get that out there because most guys don't get that nuance in the entrepreneurs, especially the younger ones. Yeah. Um, so it's good and important. Okay, let's talk about culture. Obviously in Silicon Valley, I get reading this more in the Waymo guy and that, that writing it, that's the Silicon Valley. It's not crazy. There's a lot of great people in Silicon Valley. You're one of them. Um, the culture certainly, in an innovative culture, there's been some things in the press. Inclusion and diversity obviously is super important. Um, this whole programmer thing that's been kind of kicked around. How are you dealing with all that? Because, you know, this is a cultural shift. Um, but it's be, I think it's being made out more than it really is, but there's still our core issues. Your thoughts on the whole inclusion and diversity and this whole programmer blowback thing. Yeah, well, so I think the, so first of all, really important issues, glad we're talking about them, and we all need to get better. And to me, the question for us has been, uh, what, what role do we play? And because I would say it is a relatively small subset of the tech industry and mm -hmm. the venture capital industry, at the same time, the behavior that has become public is appalling, right? It's appalling yeah, yeah. and totally unacceptable. And so then the question is, okay, how can we be a part of the stand-up part of the ecosystem? Yeah. And, you know, some of which is uh, calling things out when, when, when we see them, though, mm -hmm. frankly, we work with and hang out with people where we don't see them that often. And then part of it is, how do we find a couple of ways to contribute meaningfully? So for example, this summer we ran what we call the Coast to No Access Fellowship intentionally, mm -hmm. trying to provide first opportunity in venture capital for um, people who traditionally haven't had as, as much access. Uh, we created an event in the spring called Seat at the Table, 
really particularly around women in the tech industry, mm -hmm. and it went so well that we're running it in New York on October 19th. So if you're a woman yeah. in tech in New York, we'd love to yeah. see you then. Yeah. And we're just trying to you're find a couple of places. You're doing it in an authentic places. way though. You're not really doing it from a promotional standpoint. No, it's we're just, legit. yeah, we're just trying to do, yeah. a you know, pick off a couple of things that we can do yeah. so we can be on the side of the good guys. So the, I guess what you're saying is just have high integrity and be part of the solution, not the part of the problem. That's right, and by the way, you know, both of these initiatives were ones that were, uh, you know, kicked off in late 2016. So it's not a reaction to yeah. things like binary capital and, and uh, the, the problems at Uber, both of which are, you know, are, yeah. are, are appalling, but. Uh, Self-awareness is critical. Because that's out to the, the nuts and bolts of the, the real reason why I wanted you to come on. One was to find out how much money you have to spend for the entrepreneurs that are watching. Yeah. Give us the update on the last fund. So you got a new fund, you just closed. So the new fund, you're in th fund three. So you got yeah. have your other funds that are still out there and have some funds reserved, which is yeah. So interesting. so uh, what's the number amount? How much are you writing checks for? Give the whole thesis. Absolutely. So you know we're an early stage investor, so we lead Series A and seed financings in companies that change the way the world does business. So up and down the stack of business facing software, data driven applications. Uh, machine learning and AI driven applications. But the and filter is changing the world, the way the, the world, world works. Does, the, the way, yes, but in particular the way the world does business. You can okay, think of it as a business case. facing software stack, okay. right? We're not social media investors, it's Got not it. what we know, it's not what we're good at. And uh, it includes security and management and you know the yeah. data stack. And Enterprise DevOps and emerging tools. tech. That's right. Yeah. And the and every uh, crazy idea in between. That's right, <laughs> absolutely. And so we'll participate in or, or, or lead Seed financings, those most typically are half a million to maybe one and a quarter, and we'll lead Series A financing, small ones might be two or two and a half million dollars at the outer edge is probably a six million dollar check. We uh, were just opening up in the next couple of days, a, a thousand square feet of incubation space at world headquarters in Palo Alto. Nice. So, uh, Alation, Acme Ticketing, and Zen IQ are companies that nice. we invested at. What uh, location is that going to be at? That's at, uh, in, at Near the fills in, uh, <laughs> in, in in downtown Palo Alto, 164 staff, and uh, th those three companies are ones where we effectively invested at formation and incubated right. them for a year. We love doing that. Have to hang out at fills more and get the data. Absolutely. And so you got some funds. What else do you have going on? Uh, 175 million. Yeah. So fund so one fu was a was a hundred million dollar fund, and then fund two was a 135 million dollar fund. And the last investment of, uh, of uh, Fund 2, which we you know, announced about three weeks ago, is called Roadster. So it's e-commerce enablement for the modern dealership. So omni-channel and mobile-first yeah. yeah. uh, uh, infrastructure for, uh, for auto dealers. We have already closed and had the first board meeting for the first new investment of, of Fund 3, which, uh, which isn't yet announced, but in the land of computer vision and deep learning. So a couple of the subjects that we care deeply about and spend a lot of time thinking and about. And average check size for the A round again, C to A, what do you normally uh, do? The uh, average for the seed is, is you know, half a million to one and a quarter and probably average for, um, for a series A is four, four, four or five. And you'll lead A's. And we will lead A's. Okay, great. Uh, what's the coolest thing you're working on right now that gets you excited? It doesn't have to be a portfolio company, but with research you're doing, uh, thing tires you're kicking uh, in, in subjects or uh, domains? You know, so honestly, one of the great benefits of the, of the venture capital business is that I get up and my neurons are firing right away every day. And I, you know, I do think that, uh, for example, um, you know, one of the things that we love is uh, is all of the agile infrastructure, and so we've got you know our friends at Victor Ops that are in the middle of that space, and the thinking about how the modern programmer works, how uh, you know everybody people have been talking about DevOps. Security is very much on our radar. In fact, um, you know we uh, someone who you should have on your uh, on your show is Ashish Gupta and Casey Ellis. So Ashish just joined Bug Crowd as the CEO, and Casey mm. moves over to CTO and uh, the word bug bounty was just entered into the Oxford Dictionary for the first time last week, so that to me is the Great. ultimate in category creation. So uh, security and DevOps tools are among the yeah. things that we really and like. And bounties will become the norm as more and more decentralized apps hit the scene. Are you doing anything on decentralized applications? I'm not saying blockchain in particular, but blockchain-like, obviously, distributed computing you're, you're well versed That's on. That's right. I mean, we, blockchain we, will have an impact in your blockchain area. Blockchain will have an impact. We just, we, you know, we just spent a, uh, a, a, an hour talking about it in the context of our offsite at the Cosanoa Lodge on, in Pescadero. <laughs> uh, I felt like it was important that we go there yeah. and, uh, and, and digging into it. I think actually the 
edge computing is good, is actually more actionable for us right now, given the things that we're given the things that we're interested in and we're doing. And the I, you know, it is it is just fascinating how uh, compute centralizes, then decentralizes, centralizes, then decentralizes again. And I do think that yeah. there are a set of things that are fascinating about what you process at the edge and what you send back to the core. As Pat Gelsinger said on theCUBE, if you're not out in front of that next wave, you're driftwood, a lot of big waves coming in. You've seen a lot of waves. You were part of one, one that changed the world, Netscape browser, wrote the business plan for that first product manager on that, congratulations. Now you're at a whole nother generation. You ready? Absolutely, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally ready. I, I'm Greg ready to Sands go. Greg Sands here in theCUBE in New York City, part of Big Data NYC. More live coverage with theCUBE after this short break. Thanks for watching.